You know what I also have come to realize within Seventh-day Adventism? I've known a number of individuals who have gone to various training centers, schools, to learn how to do medical missionary work mm -hmm. called portering evangelism. And even Bible workers, Bible work. And they are sent back into their local churches where the leaders don't give them an outlet to share and to work with those gifts and talents. So they're spending hundreds, hundreds of dollars. Thousands. Thousands, okay, to be trained. And because the engine, the body, the local church is not following the blueprint of God's word, these people sit on those acquired talents in ministry. And since they're not being used, they die. They, the limbs become Wither. atrophied mm. and spiritually they also die. So we go back to the point, one more reason why God says we need to have vibrant, lively centers of worship wherein the extension of the work may go forward. Souls can be trained and sent forth. You know, when I came to, to Florida and I realized what was going on here in in Claremont at that church, we prayed about it. I said, we cannot go back leaving Las Vegas, leaving, leaving LA mm -hmm. in California. Hillary, we cannot go back and sit down, not with these gifts and talents, humbly speaking, God has given to us. And we came right down into, into Orlando here and began knocking on doors, Bible work, calling for services in people's homes and God blessed since 2006 to the present. So I believe what God has done for us, he can do even more for those of you who are watching. This is one of my statements uh, of instructions that I wanna share with you from the book Evangelism, page 106. Brother and sister Haskell have rented a house in one of the best parts of the city and have gathered round them a family of helpers who day by day go out giving Bible readings, selling our papers, and doing medical missionary work. Notice, this was done daily. And that's why when God led us here in our walk here at Safe to Serve, I said, we have to have a body of workers, not just a self-supporting church, we need extensions of the ministry. And that's what God has been doing here with EG Bible School, with Pastor Tinsley, and with Gospel of Health with Pastor Kofer and others, others. It says, during the hour of worship, the workers relate their experiences. Bible studies are regularly conducted in the home. And the young men and young women connected with the mission receive a practical, our training in holding Bible readings and in selling our publications. The Lord has blessed their labors. A number have embraced the truth mm. and many others are deeply interested. Praise God. Listen to this. A similar work should be done in many cities. The young people who go out to labor in these cities should be under the direction of experience consecrated leaders let the workers be provided with a good home in which they may receive power training mm -hmm. when you look at these schools of the prophets uh, and their purpose and their intent God has given us these this blueprint um, as an education when you look at homes uh, you look at even with Elijah. Elijah was looked upon as a father. And you see in other places where there were families. There was a family environment in these schools of the prophets. Where they not only, as they were trained in ministry lines, they were also trained in business merchant lines. When you had the woman whose father, husband was deceased and the creditors wanted to come and take the children away. And Elisha 
had instructed her to go and get the bottles of oil and God would fill them and then she was to sell them, pay the debt and to live off of the rest of those finances. You see also in the schools of the prophets how when God had begun to bless and more students were coming and the students came to Elisha, first king, second king, um, second king chapter six. And they said, the place be too straight for us. And they said, let us go down and let's fell some trees because they wanted to expand the grounds. And so when you look at these uh, schools of the prophets, they were to be again centers where business was conducted, uh, where missionary lines was conducted, and it was to prove as a barrier and a safeguard against the corruption, not again, sadly to point out, not only in the world, but from the Hophnais and the Phineas, mm -hmm. who had caused people to walk away from the truth of God. Mm -hmm. But through the schools of the prophets, these people were to be won back to the cause of truth. And so these centers were to serve as, again, a barrier against error, corruption. It was also to furnish the youth and families with skills that they could survive in the business world as well as in missionary lines. And so again, these things are to be reproduced. But again, you cannot do this in one week. You cannot do this in a weekend seminar. This is something that is ongoing continuously that must take place. And last point, even when you go back to when Samuel conducted and began these schools of the prophets, one thing we understand that Samuel was a priest, he was a prophet, he was there at Shiloh, but also Samuel prepared a sacrifice in the high places where the schools of the prophets were. They had their altar for worship. They had their sacrifices. Uh, we see in Second Kings where there were offerings and means that one would say was only to go to the storehouse, but they were also given to the schools of the prophets to supply the students with adequate means to do the work that God had given to them to do. So these things are to be re reproduced in this our day. I just want to add to that because when you look at kind of bringing all things full circle, these, these examples that you see in the Bible has been our template. Uh, Pastor Tinsley, Pastor Enriquez and I have had countless hours of dialogue over the years in trying to follow this, <clears throat> this blueprint in Christ's method. The reason why we focus on prophetic events, even using prophetic events as a medium by which to convey truths that would cause people to slumber otherwise, is Christ's method. Christ used the issues of the day. Christ used issues in the church and made it parabolic. The sermon concerning, or the parable concerning the, the Good Samaritan, the parable concerning the unjust steward, all these things were made parabolic and made a vehicle to communicate gospel truth. This is Christ's method. The way in which he preached, the location, the spiritual emphasis has been over and over and over again presented before the people through these ministries because it's Christ's method. We didn't just say, you know, it would be cool to be on the internet. We understood that this digital revolution is a paradigm shift in the entire world. You've heard my prophecy. There's never been a moment like this since the time of Martin Luther and the Reformers. And the ability to, to promulgate and promote the truth has never been like this. This is why early on, Pastor Enriquez and Pastor Tindley and I basically went digital. I mean, we were making DVDs. We were writing our newsletters, we were traveling, doing different kind of work, and we saw this, what we call the Digital River Jordan, as a way by which we could start a school all over the world. And rather than, nothing wrong with it generally, but rather than trying to hold back certain teachings and make them DVDs just for sale, we put everything online. We, we just gave everything. If people want DVD, fine, but we, we just gave everything. And we started creating a library of sermons whereby people in Africa, in Kenya, I'm going to ask these brethren about their statistics. Africa, all over the world, people are watching. While we're sleeping, people are watching and are studying point by point in the School of Prophets. We have students all over the world studying these divine truths, studying with us. And also people that come to the actual school that we hold come 
to be trained up because this God's method to use these advanced principles, whether it be social media, whether it be the internet, to try and get the message out so that when the church closes down and are closing down, and when the church becomes antagonistic toward the truth, there's still a platform, there's still lighthouses, both digital and practical, to present the truth and to bring Bible context, bring young, pious men and women that are tra training to, under the Holy Spirit to be evangelists. This is a necessary blueprint. This is why we do school the prophets. This is why we hold them. This is why we have this mode of operation. This is why we're trying to set up templates and examples and give forth teaching that people can be ready for the coming storm. So many, brothers and sisters, are being prepared to be silent, to countenance and to compromise and to, to rationalize evil in the church because Satan knows that if you can learn the principles of compromise at the foot of the priest, you will yield to the power of the beast by and by. The church has always been historically the way by which Satan will use a, a, a preparatory school for apostasy in a secular world. This is what we're seeing now in the School of Prophecy are necessary. This is a template in every line that we see. And I'll close with this point before I give it to my brother for last comments. It is deadly to just preach and focus on the last 15 chapters of the Great Controversy. Many of the presidential preachers of our day mm. focus on the last 15 chapters of the book Great Controversy. They focus, they, they glory in, and praise God for any study of any topic of anywhere, but they glory in the last 15 chapters and the ideas of the coming time of trouble and the idea of the Sunday law and the idea of the close of probation. These things must be dwelt upon. But Ellen White says in the preface, the introduction to the book Great Controversy, that the entire book shows a template of things to come. It must be studied. All these things were put in a short compass because she said, we don't need to really dwell upon this large teaching concerning Martin Luther, but God showed me these points that will be repeated in the last days and these ways by which Satan will work to destroy the truth and workers in the last days so that we can study these things. So when we study Martin Luther, we see a template. How Luther and Wycliffe worked together. That's why Luther and Melanchthon worked together, establishing schools and churches as a template for us. Wycliffe's Lollards, gathering young men together and sending them out with literature and helping them understand the work so that after Wycliffe was gone, they did a work all over Europe. It's a template. The work of the Methodist Connection, where these individuals were all ministers of their faith, but they saw that their own peers were false teachers and were beguiling souls. They started to connect together and organize in a way that would protect the sheep of God. It was called the Methodist Connect. They didn't know that zeal or desire to create another church. They were just being faithful to the blueprint. All these things are Christ's method. It's not calling out of the church, brothers and sisters. It's calling men to the Day of Atonement, calling them to righteousness, making them prepared to receive the Holy Spirit and to get ready, get ready, get ready for the end of time. Brothers, any last word before we close on that point, if any? Over with that, I want to thank our host, Pastor Enriquez, here at Save to Serve, for opening up his mm. facility for this recording. I want to thank also Pastor Tinsley of EG Bible School for even flying in to fellowship with us for a few moments and do this work. And again, uh, I'm thankful for you joining with us and also not only watching this, but going back over and writing down notes. Not only watching and writing down notes, but also sharing this and also the smaller parts of, parts of this message with friends and foes alike to get a knowledge of these truths before people. Don't just hear it, also share it. Who will pray for us before we close out this session? Anyone want to have a prayer? Let's pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're thankful for Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. We're thankful that you are fulfilling your words of Luke 21. You will give us a mouth to speak words that the enemies of your faith would not be able to gainsay, contradict, or resist. They will have to yield as long as they are sincere. I pray for all of your workers worldwide. Yes, Lord. That we will prepare ourselves to enter into that upper room, being in one place on one accord. Yes, please. That we Lord. may receive 
the outpouring of the showers to really finish the work you have given to us. It must first be finished in our hearts Please, before Father. it can be done outside. Yes. I thank you for what you will continue to do, that your name will be glorified. Keep us humble, keep us faithful. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for answering. Bless even those who joined us in watching and listening and those afterward. All these things we ask, we thank you as we send this prayer to you in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.